just get your mind together and come on across to me. We'll hold hands and we'll watch the sun rise from the bottom of the sea. But first, are you experienced? Have you ever been an experience? I am. Probably scream and cry at you. Little world won't, won't let you go. Have a look and get the names right. <clears throat> what I want to talk about today is the assassination of John Lennon and why he was assassinated and why God chose to do that. If everything's perfect and happening automatically and there's complete justice in the world, how can that be? How can John Lennon be assassinated? Did he deserve to be assassinated? Why did God assassinate him? Did he commit any crimes that haven't been reported in the media? I investigated this yesterday in some detail because you're going to ask me these questions if there's just justice in the world. You know, you have to answer all these kind of questions. And then there's also the question of demons, what they are, and the science behind them that, that's coming up in the, ne the next... Uh, next chapter in the book of Enoch. <clears throat> and so, just to get this square away, this whole idea of that everything's perfect, everything's happening automatically, and you cannot blame people for doing stuff. You have to look at the actual, what happened, and the death of a person tells you everything about what's going to happen to them in the next life and how they lived their life and what their crime was, okay? It tells you that. It's for a sign. God does that for a sign. Now, that's not my teaching. That comes from the ancient Greeks and people in primitive cultures used to know these things because they, their minds weren't taken up with all of the nonsense, internet and science and all this stuff. And they just used to concentrate on what was important in life, like getting through life and living a good life and dying a good death. <clears throat> That's what the Greeks were. And we're descendants of the Greeks. And the, the Greek society was a very great society, believe you me, and the father of our society. <clears throat> now, the guy that shot... John Lennon, his name was Mark David Chapman, and he was a person who had gone on to the pathway of divinity, <clears throat> and he'd read the Bible and done all the study, and he'd put the Bible into practice, he'd followed the teachings of Jesus, that thy will be done, not my will, that thy will be done, and he was very successful um, with children and with, um, I just have to see, see, um, let's just have a look here, biography, here we go. Yeah, he was a born again Presbyterian, and actually it doesn't, this isn't, we need this, this, this is the murder of Dutch, we need his um, entry. We need his main entry. They left it out in here because they don't regard this sort of stuff as part and parcel. You've got to look at the, his, his main entry. And the link isn't here, that's interesting. The link isn't here. I'm going to have to search again. David Chapman.
Yeah, okay. He worked successfully for World Vision with Vietnamese refugees at a resettlement camp at Fort Chaffrey in Arkansas. After a brief visit to Lebanon for the same work, he was traveling the world to help just wherever he can. This is the job of the divine to do this. This is what the church is supposed to be doing. He was named an area coordinator, so he became high level in this and key aide to a program director, David Moore, who made a said Chapman care deeply for the children and worked hard. Okay, Chapman accompanied Moore to meetings with government officials and President Gerald Ford shook his hand. So that was a sign that he was on a high level pathway. He was going there, you know, he dedicated his life to the will of God. He was an angel, he was going up. And then it says here that he became obsessed with guilt over having a previous affair. Okay, so he quit, committed some crimes of the couple. And I, that is the absolute point where his life changes. He changed from a wonderful thing like Paul McCartney was into something like Keith Richards ended up as, you know. He ended up doing a lot of drugs <clears throat> and he had difficulties. <clears throat> Clinical depression, this is where God takes your light away. Terrible crime. I've had it. I, um, I did the dirty on a lady. I was with a lady and I went to another lady and then I lost that lady within six months of being with her. She went off with somebody else and then I was left in a clinical depression for years afterwards. A terrible, terrible crime it is to do the dirt on the lady. And that's probably what he did because you know when you get into those kind of positions, you become attractive to ladies and you're dealing with a lot of people and all you've got to do is start to get a little bit out of hand with other ladies and before you know it you've committed the crime. <clears throat> anyway, to cut a long story short, <clears throat> he ended up wanting to commit suicide. Ah, there were some other th issues first. So he fell from um, his type of work that he should have been doing was working for the church. He ended up as a security guard and he would have hated every minute of his job. Um, <clears throat> and so in the end, he just decided to leave that job and just travel for a bit. He went on some pilgrimage <clears throat> um, at this point. He travelled the world on pilgrimage. So you know, he completed that part of the journey to get his level. And um, now he was fallen angel, demonic really. And um, God takes you on a very, uses the demonic angels to actually commit these kind of things that he wants to happen. He forces these people to do these kind of things, like assassinate John Lennon, but we, we'll come to that. First of all, he has to try to kill himself. <clears throat> and so if your life gets to the point where you just cannot see the way forward is just end, it's just end. Now, I've had that in my life. I've, I've got to that point where I started to consider <clears throat> how to kill myself and um, you know the same thought came to me as what came to him <clears throat> the car in the garage and a pipe yeah I never got past that I somehow I needed to have the experience because I need to teach it now I've had every experience I've got to the point but never ever got past it okay never got to where he was and so what happened with him was he put the pipe in the exhaust and got in the car and he was kind of going out and somebody w walked up. Now this is the kind of thing, you know, it takes, a, 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 all events come from nature, come from God. And the fact that somebody actually found him meant that he wasn't meant to go out in that way. And it's perfect that he gets stopped at that point. And he knew it too. He talked about realizing as soon as he saw this guy stop him, he knew that he couldn't do it, that it was something else. And <clears throat> the reason that God does that is because there's no waste in the universe. God will not waste anything. It will always find some use for something. And it's like the food that goes out in the supermarket. I end up buying most of it. Not most of it, but most of the food, all of the food I eat is the stuff that they're going to throw away because what God wants to do at the highest level is to make sure there's nothing wasted in the universe. And because I'm part of that 
the church of the elect. We're supposed to live in poverty, chastity, obedience, which this guy was supposed to be doing too. And it's not possible that his body just be killed and not used for, uh, for some purpose of God. And so the next step was, the first thing that comes into his mind at that point is, well, he has to kill John Lennon, you know. And he'd been reading this book, The Catcher in the Rye, which is a, a book about defending the children, defending the children from not letting the children go over the cliff top. And he was obsessed with this idea of defending the children. And defending the children is what caused him to do what he did with John Lennon. He did that for reasons of defending children. And God put a sign, he said, I'm a hole in the book, the catcher in the rye, when he's taken away by the police. He's holding and reading that book for a sign to say, this is related to what's going on here. And that, what that's related to is that the protection of children. <clears throat> Now, I did notice that there was a woman <clears throat> who took a, who was killed, her daughter was killed, and she was put in a wheelchair for life at uh, one concert killing in, uh, mass killing in the UK here. And I, I looked into that, this is some years ago, so I'm having to recall this from memory, and the reason that happened was that she took this, it was a movie actually, it was, it was Batman Returns or something like that, and it was a, a terrible movie to take a, a young child to, and so the child was really, really frightened, she said, Mummy, 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 you know, can I hold on? And the, the, the woman said, no, you have to sit in your seat, and, you know, be a, be a big girl. <laughs> and it was like midnight, or, you know, early in the morning. And so what's a child doing in a place like this? And what is the crime of the parent to the child? To take a child late at night when there should be a bed, a home in bed, to this terrible movie. And so this woman suffered for it. She didn't get killed. She got put into a wheelchair, right? Which means she has another chance. She's still got another chance. It's more difficult to learn our lessons if we're having a good life, if we're having a really bad life, then we start to think about what we're doing and we learn our lessons. Yoko Ono got a second chance. He could have shot both of them. If they were both meant to go out, he would have shot both of them. Like Ferdinand and Sophia that started World War I, both of them went out at the same time. The same assassin. He would have done both of them if God thought that both of them need to go out. As it is, Yoko Ono gets a second chance for some reason. Now, John Lennon was given all of the power of the highest angel to be able to do what he did. And he messed around with women, yeah? He did the dirty on his partner and probably multiple people after that and ended up with this Yoko Ono woman which basically split up the Beatles group. The Beatles group could not carry on after that. I'm going to stop something coming in the door. Now, John Lennon was the leader of the revolution, really, to free the people from an oppressive social order which existed before the 60s movement. It was terribly oppressive. I lived in it. I was at school in it. I lived through the period before and the period after the, the Beatles. And I just know that so many things changed, so much colour came back into the world, it was so depressing 
before the Beatles came into the world. And their songs were songs of righteousness in the couple. You see, and what their songs are, are all about couple and the crimes against a couple and don't do that. Oh, you can't do that. You know, this kind of thing. They're teaching. These were the first couple teachings that they were given. They didn't know what they were writing. It all comes from the muse, if you listen to Nana Cohen say. It's not him that does it. <clears throat> so Bob Dylan too says it's not, it's not, it doesn't come from him. It only, he doesn't know, he just writes it down. It's from the muse from inside. And unless you've got a lady, you don't get, you can't do it. The lady is the muse. And you'll see that all of the, the writers of the Beatles, Paul McCartney and John Lennon, had very high level ladies <clears throat> that they were connected with. You can study their past and look at this, it's all documented on, um, on Wikipedia. You can look into their lives and see the lovely couples that they were in the beginning. <clears throat> And the Beatles started to go downwards as they, as they um, broke the laws of the couple. <clears throat> Together with people like Eric Clapton too, you know, Eric Clapton stole Patty Boyd off George Harrison. And I don't know what George did to deserve that, but, you know, it's like they were all intertwined in the 60s movement. They thought you could just have free love, you know, like do what you like. It's not true. And look at them all. They all end up really, really bad people yeah doing bad stuff they were bad people they were still good but they were doing bad stuff yeah and they couldn't help themselves because god makes you do bad stuff degrading stuff if you make these mistakes because you have to learn you know you should listen you should listen to the voice of the of the couple that i am speaking to you with you cannot do crimes with a couple. It's not possible. And you need to look at these people, the lives of the people who've done it and realise that that's what they did. did. Pete Seeger never ever committed a crime in the, against a couple. If you want the opposite example, check his life out. It's a wonderful, wonderful life. Because he stayed with the same lady his whole life. It makes a difference. Now, Mark Chapman, there was three people involved, three, three, three others besides John Lennon, because there's always three things in the universe. And these three people are David Bowie and James Taylor. David Bowie and James Taylor and John Lennon. These three people get the big message from the one event of assassinating Lennon. Now, and it also tells us a story of what's going on. Now, James Taylor was with Carly Simon. They were a special couple, but he must have done the dirty on her because he lost her in the end. And it was probably about the same time. I, I haven't checked the dates, but it's something you could look into. You could look, look into why did James Taylor get the warning here. Yeah. Okay, so... I'm going to leave a link. You can see Mark Chapman's, what he thought of the whole operation in his own words. And you can see he's telling the truth. He didn't want fame. He didn't want any of that. He just couldn't help himself. He had to do it. Now, what happened in this case is a demon takes him over. Because he, he tried to commit suicide, that means that he's able to be taken over by a demon. If he'd committed suicide, he would have become a demon and would be able to take on over somebody else but because he tried to commit suicide now a demon is allowed to take him over and use him and so he did describe that he, he what seems to be that that he was taken over by a demon now Mark Chapman will spend the rest of his life in jail over this even though he pleaded guilty and was a model prisoner and everything, they'll never let him out because then they just don't understand the science of it. And as soon as he starts talking about demons and stuff like that, they think, oh, medicate him, chuck him. You know, you can't even discuss the science of demonology, even though demonology has been a science 
throughout the ages. The Greeks knew about them, the Chinese know about them, the Indians know about them, the, <laughs> the Theosophists and the Anthroposophists know about them, the Christians know about them. Jesus Christ cast demons out of people and those demons went out and, and, and got into animals. You know, it's a complete, demons have been with us for tens of thousands of years. And so it's necessary to just not say, oh, well, I don't believe in demons because I don't know about them. Because you're some junior player who's never actually taken the proper walk, gone all the way, gone on your pilgrimages and everything. And then goes, okay, well, now you're ready to learn about demons. No, you haven't done the work. And so you don't know about it. So you think, oh, well, just because I don't know about it doesn't mean that somebody else doesn't know about it. And you should respect teachers who know this stuff. <clears throat> now, having been taken over by a demon, Mark Chapman can do nothing but what the demon wants him to do. So the demon takes him to where John Lennon is and he starts to, to habituate this place where Lennon is coming and going. And he... He gets Lennon to sign an autograph and he has some kind of a meeting with him where Lennon signs the autograph. Now, it's interesting because Lennon is also like forced by God. We're all under the will of God, but Lennon, you'd think that after signing the autograph, his wife's waiting for him in the car, you know, twiddling her thumbs and he's taking up time. You think he said, you know, the guy would say thanks. And he'd he walk off, but no, he's got the gun in his pocket, Chapman, he's just had the autograph signed, he's given the code back, and, and Lennon is rooted to the spot, he can't get in the car, he says, do you want anything else? <laughs> and Chapman at that point, you know, the demons, the demons not moving him, so it's like, no, and he let him go, you see, so he let him go. And then later on, <clears throat> he, I think it's the same, could be the same evening or it could be the next day, something like that, I can't remember, you check it out. But he's there, he's outside, and it's later on, there's not as many people around, it's quiet, everybody's gone home. And <clears throat> there were many things that could have happened to take him out, but take him away from the place, but they, they, God conspired to make sure that all the other people, all the other players left him, and he had no opportunity to get away and be anywhere else. He had to be there. And John Lennon came in the car and got out. She was in front of him and walked away and he shot him in the back. Now, <clears throat> I want to tell you about shooting in the back because if you fight a war <clears throat> and you're a coward and you run away from the enemy in battle, you don't put your hands up and put your gun down and face it or wait for them or fight them you turn around and run <laughs> and then you get shot in the back very quickly God takes you out because that's a final sign if you like that you were a coward and you met your side down <clears throat> now John Lennon wrote a song called Imagine <clears throat> And it was a terrible lie. This is what Chapman also, Chapman realized that this was a terrible lie. Because John Lennon was his hero. He, he was his leader, his spiritual leader, John Lennon was. And he'd followed him through his career and been led by him. And John Lennon always said, imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. Just all of us, you know, coming together in love and, you know, working together, cooperating, all this sort of stuff, being together. And what Chapman saw was that Lennon had all this money. And he said, imagine no possessions. And here's Chapman with no job, he's got nothing. He's been living without, he's given everything away, living without possessions. And Lennon is talking about this stuff teaching this stuff, but not doing it himself. And Lennon was very, very stingy with what he had. And it was probably more the influence of, well, I don't know why,
But and all I know is that their house was full of like Egyptian artifacts that cost millions of dollars. And you know, he just used to like buy loads and loads of objects and articles. And you know, he's driving the great big Rolls Royce and um, loads of stuff, you know, loads and loads of stuff. And not actually leading the people, not providing a place for people like Chapman to actually join together and, and continue the revolution, unlike what the guy who started it in America did. The guy who started it in America created, taught the people to make the revolution, and then he guided them to, to all get together, club together, work together, buy a farm, and created what's called the farm community wrote down all of his teachings, presented them in a special book and they had a musical band and they toured the country and um, encouraged people to join them, you know. <laughs> and young ladies who fell pregnant in the 60s, they could go to the farm and they could get like their birth their babies. Um, without having to go into bad hospitals and places like that, you know. So he did a really wonderful job. And see, so he he was he did the job that Lennon, he he's the model. Like Pete Seeger is the model, and Bob Dylan is like the counterpart, you know, the dark side. You've got John Lennon and this other guy from the farm. I don't remember his name. From the farm community is sort of the two opposite two. One in England and one in America. But John Lennon also left England. He abandoned his country and he went and lived in a foreign country and spent all his money on objects and stuff and didn't share it around and didn't continue the revolution and so left thousands of people who had listened to him and walked the walk together with him and like like they were like Jesus and his disciples you know that sort of thing and they'd done everything that he said to them to do um, and now Lenin had just like decided he was rich enough and didn't have to do anything anymore. And, and what Lennon was going to do the next day, he got tickets to, to watch David Bowie. And David Bowie was number two on, Lennon, on um, Mark Chapman's list of people that God had said, write these names down. <laughs> Anybody on Chapman's list really should be examining their life. Yeah. And so... Bowie was number two, and at the time, David Bowie, I learned this recently, was playing the Elephant Man on a Broadway, I think, show. And Lennon had bought tickets to see the Elephant Man the next day after he was shot. This is very, very important. Now, I haven't seen, I don't know anything about the play The Elephant Man, but I saw the movie The Elephant Man and I wouldn't watch it again. I would not take anybody to see that movie. I would not recommend anybody watch that movie. It is a terrible, awful movie to watch. It is revolting. It's terrible. It's evil movie. To make a movie like that is evil. <clears throat> and it's like Rosemary's Baby. To make a movie like Rosemary's Baby is really evil. And Roman Polanski's wife was murdered by the Manson people in the same sort of circumstances as John Lennon. You know, it's the same thing going on here. There are certain crimes that you just cannot do. And look what happened to Roman Polanski afterwards. You know, and they let him go and like he had sex with children and stuff like this. Really bad stuff. And so to get back to the David Bowie um, Elephant Man show, when David Bowie came on stage, he could see three empty seats in the front row because they were the most expensive. Oops. <laughs> I 
change the table yesterday. Yeah, that's really funny um, because I thought in the last video, I thought I'm going to finish this video in one session, which I did. But then it all got chopped off because there's only it, it, this particular camera, the program inside it, can only cope with three videos and then it chops off the rest. So it'll chop it off into one video and then two video, then the third video, but the third video always gets chopped off and they won't make a fourth video. So the camera turns itself off or something at that moment. And so I lost everything up to the David Bowie finding the three seats, empty seats, on the stage. And the 30 minutes of talk after that's gone, so I'm going to have to do it again. I don't know what's going to come out. I can't remember anything I spoke in the whole lot of it. And, so, and it's funny, I watched it back and discovered this, and so... As I came to start to film it again, lo and behold, I saw some flashing light at the window, I opened the curtains, and there's the ambulance outside. So, maybe I have to tell you about the ambulance thing, that John Lennon didn't die instantly. John Lennon lived for quite some time, suffered inside his death for some time. They took him in a police car. Now, if John Lennon had been an ordinary person, like it wasn't John Lennon, it was just somebody in the street, if it had been Mark Chapman lying down on the ground, the police wouldn't have done that, it would have just left him to die, probably. I think. I think it was just because it was John Lennon. They thought, oh, it's John Lennon, we've got to do something special. So they actually carried him into the police car and because they, they to get him to hospital as fast as possible and messed up their police car with blood and everything like that they would have done and um, took two police cars put Yoko Ono in the other car and raced them off to the hospital took him into the emergency and they tried to save him that would have been a terrible experience you know, trying to revive him and eventually died <clears throat> so it wasn't an easy death <clears throat> It was a slow death, and I suppose that's also what happened to his spiritual movement. The people in it died a slow death because, you know, he didn't say anything, he didn't tell anybody, he just stopped doing it. Okay, now, when he shot Lennon, James Taylor has this strange story to tell. I left this bit out last time I did it, so it is why it is with everything, the mistakes are the best part because now you're going to get the proper story. James Taylor had met this guy the day before, something like that, and he was coming out of a subway and this guy was telling him about how he was going to do stuff with John Lennon and John Lennon was going to help him and stuff like that. And maybe John Lennon and him had some conversation or something, or maybe he promised him something, or maybe John Lennon, like, didn't deliver or something. I don't know. There might have been something there, because he did tell a lot of stuff to James Taylor. And um, James Taylor thought he was a bit crazy. And he was glad to get away. And he ended up... He was sitting in his apartment, which was near to John Lennon's, not the same building, but across the way, I think. And he heard the shots, five shots, bomb, 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 five shots. And he found out that John Lennon got killed shortly after that. So... It's interesting, it's a bit of a warning to him, really. Five shots. There are probably five people who need to actually take notice of this. <laughs> I 
I remember when I was a child, one of the I my I was like Chapman um, with Bob Dylan. I was I think about twelve years old, twelve thirteen years old, and I used to listen to Bob Dylan very deeply and respected Bob Dylan tremendously. And I listened to um, that one, Hollis Brown. He lived on the outskirts of town with his wife and five children and his cabin broken down. Now, seven shots ring out like the ocean's pounding roar. It's a book about a guy, he's living, he can't survive without, in the terrible situation he's in, like, uh, and um, with his wife and his children starving and everything. So he shoots a lot, shoots himself and shoots a lot. You know? What else can you do? And so, how would you do that? You know, that would be like a demon would have to take you over too, probably, to do something like that. They're all got taken out because that's probably best for them. And the lesson that is, needs to be learned is by the people come find us and they say, there must be something wrong with society here. How can this happen? It makes us wake up. It, it's a wake-up call, really. And so, I know what it's like to kind of study the teachings of somebody and, and feel that you've been let down by them. And Bob Dylan kind of, Bob Dylan never, ever gave up. You know, never ever gave up. He continued and continued and continued on and some of his greatest works are ones he's just done. Really, really great stuff. The J.F. Kennedy assassination song. It's great. So we have to learn our lessons from these things. And the reason Mark Chapman did some of the things he did, did this thing, was also so that I could see and learn from it and tell you this. That's also one of the reasons he did His life wasn't wasted. If Mark Chapman hadn't done this, this teaching would never have come out. Never. Because it needs a sort of example to study that you can say, ha, ah, I see what's going on here. I see how this works. I see why this happens and it needs a very big one like this, a very unique one like this. The Manson one isn't as easy to, they were, you know, like, we're doing bad stuff, but this guy was a pretty good guy, you know, Mark uh, Chapman. You know, after he killed Lennon, he just stood there and the guy in the hotel came and knocked the gun out of his hand and he just stood there and then he just read the Catcher in the Rye. And the guy said to him, get, oh, get out. He said, get out. And so Mark Chapman could have said, oh, I'm run away. There was nobody there. He was, he was there alone in the street. And the subway entrance was just over there. And he could just run down and run away. He couldn't because the demon said, no, that's it. Now you stand and wait for the police. And that's what he did. And the police came and they, you know, did the usual stuff, <laughs> threw him on the ground, chuck handcuffs on him, you know, that terrible stuff that they do. Shouldn't do that. If a man doesn't need that, they shouldn't do it. They didn't used to do that in the old days. They had their sword ready, if you did anything, but as long as you did what you were told, it's okay. You know? And so that's how guys end up like that guy that got killed by the police treading on his head because they do this sort of thing you throw people on the ground it's not right you should just say look you know you're under arrest are you going to argue with that there will be consequences <laughs> there'll be gnashing of teeth <laughs> but no they just do it they train very badly to treat people without respect so anyway There's certain standards of behaviour that all people need to adhere to in all situations. And it's not right that one, even if they're police, they need to be very polite. And no, the police in England don't do what they do in other parts of the world. I suppose some of them do. But general run-of-the-mill police in England are polite and friendly. Not like in Germany and places, other places in other parts of the world. Not like that, not like the South African police, you know. No, they're 
But that's only because England has a very long tradition that the police were invented in England. And when they started out, they have, you know, they started from nothing, and then they've been copied into other countries. And so other countries don't have that tradition of respect that the police have in Britain. And they're just doing what they're told, really. They're trained to do what they're told, and it's a crying shame. Anyway, to get back to David Bowie. Now, David Bowie got on stage. He'd heard about Lennon, but it hadn't really come home to roost personally until he took the stage and looked in front of him, there's three empty seats. And it's like it just like the, <laughs> the life just went out of him. It was just like horrific, you know. There's three empty seats. And um, so we know there's three seats. And I presume those seats are for his wife and partner and his child. And so John Lennon was taking his child to see the elephant man the next day. And the Elephant Man is a terrible, terrible story. And so, what do you expect? You can't take children to see these things. The child could have nightmares for months afterwards, be affect them, whole personality, uh, kind of experience like this. I don't know what it was like, but I know the movie was absolutely terrible. And so it's a wake-up call for David Bauer because anybody doing this kind of bad stuff, you know, you're getting paid money, you're doing this bad stuff, you think it's art and it's degrading you too. And I think John Lennon's murder was, or assassination was, probably a wake-up call for David Bowie and he may have uh, spruced up his accents after that. I don't know how long he carried on doing the elephant man. Yet I have seen some pretty bad stuff come out of David Bowie. I'll put a link on a really really great performance actually of the song Heroes by David Bowie. And you'll see him do a crime against a couple right there because a lot of people don't know it but the bass player the lady bass player with the bald head is his, his lady that's his partner standing next to him the two spotlights on stage a lot of people don't know that and if you look in this video clip you'll see he says some bad stuff about her and you know he tries to make it like get out he tries to get out of it but he can't help so he said it you know he said this stuff and then he invites the groupies to come and have sex with him after the show in a sort of a special way you know while she's there in front of him and then he does heroes a very remarkable great rendition of heroes and we can be heroes just for one day no 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 you know, it's the same problem, it's like bullshit. You can't be heroes just for one day. You've got to be heroes forever. Forever and ever. I know the words forever and ever are in there, so maybe he's actually saying that. I don't know, check it out, see what you think. Is he saying forever and ever, or just for one day? We can be heroes. Well, you know, David Bowie was a hero. Uh, he was a hero, and the hero is given the power to stand on stage and deliver that. That's a huge power, because only an angel can do what David Bauer did. But you know, angels can fall, and that movie Seraphim Falls is a bit of a warning there. And so, you can see similarities, if you like, Seraphim Falls and the assassination of John Lennon.
I'll put links to some of this stuff so you can actually make your own mind up. And I think it's important really to watch Chapman speak. I'll put a link to that too. To watch Chapman speak on his own behalf about what happened. It's very convincing that he's definitely telling the truth. I can tell whether somebody's telling the truth or trying to pull the wool over my eyes. And he's telling the truth. And the tragedy is, is in the beginning, he just told the truth. Yeah, he admitted his own guilt. And they didn't want to let him do that. The defense, he had to change his defense attorney and uh, they wouldn't let him, um, in the end, they didn't want him to plead uh, guilty. They wanted him to plead insanity. And if he'd done that, something really bad would have happened to him, because that was a lie, it wasn't insane. You can't plead something you're not. That really bad things happen to people who do that. And I'll tell you who did that, and um, you get shock treatment if you do that. Peter Green probably did that, I don't know for the record, because he got, he got shock treatment. But the guy, um, the 13th floor elevators man, The name doesn't come to me, must have been the devil himself. <laughs> Rock, no, Rocky Erickson, Rocky Erickson. He was busted for grass, I think that's all it was, but in those days it was a big crime. And so he pleaded insanity and they took him away and gave him shock treatment. How's that? You can't do that, you can't lie to try to get out of you know, going to jail or something, so they plead insanity. And that's what they told Chapman to do. But Chapman is just in the will of God. And God said to Chapman, no, plead guilty. And so he did. And good things happened to Chapman after that. His model prisoner. They'll never let him out. He probably doesn't need to be let out. He's, you know, he had a terrible life ahead of him as an avatar on the way with no support, his church of John Lennon and the Beatles had disowned him and not created a place where he could come and be in a community like the farm was. They hadn't created, hadn't done its work. So there was no place for the disciples to go to of John Lennon. And so, you know, what, 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 what sort of a life could he, he was looking at, he was staring at the face of nothing. He, he'd given up trying to work, he knew that was no good. He had a limited amount of money. When that ran out, he was finished. He would just have to sleep in a gutter. You know? He knew that. He knew that he wouldn't be able to go to work, back to work. That. So the best thing that could have happened to Chapman was that he ended up in prison because they would feed him there, shelter him there, he'd get access to the library there. It would just be like a university for him. That's what a church is. A church, the, the, the center of a church is a university. The university is a building where people keep the books, they keep the wisdom and study it, pass it on to others and it's a place to eat and live and receive your visitors and when you go to pilgrimage to other universities you go and study at them and they keep you and they feed you and all that. And that's what it used to be like. That's the origin of the university system. But now it's been taken over by the alumni, the Illuminati, the alumni, it's the same word, the alumni are the bosses, the gang that runs the universities and they're all connected together you know? and they have a, a special initiation rites that get you into an Illuminati, you know, you join the alumni, the Illuminati and then this propagates itself, this false church, this false teaching, this secret society if you like spread around the whole world, Harvard and Cambridge and Oxford and all this stuff. And they're old boys networks and they're closed shops. And the real wisdom, the real wise people are sleeping in the goddamn streets, you know. They're playing guitars or something, busking for, to try to survive. And there are, it's only them that take the proper walk, that take the walk of the pilgrimage, that go from place to place and become wise in the ways of nature and God. God and nature is the same thing. The laws that science talks about, which are the laws of nature, these are the laws of God. 
When I talk, use the word God, I mean science. That's what I mean. I mean science in that everything's perfect and happening automatically and there's complete justice in the world. That's the basis of all science. If you take a book, you know, if you let go of it, it's going to fall and hit the ground. Yeah? And it's the same thing. If you do the dirty on your lady, you know you're going to fall and hit the ground. And if you do the dirty on the group, you could end up getting shot in the back. Okay? And... Or you could end up shooting somebody in the back if you're a coward. And you want to try to take the easy way out. Commit suicide. Because you can't learn your lessons. The only reason anybody will commit suicide is because they've just been unable to work out what's going on. They've looked around and they just can't understand it. It's like when you... It starts with a child when it can't stop saying why. The child says, why? But why, mummy? Mummy says something else, then the child says, but why? The mother says something else, but why? And the reason is, is the child's been felt, fed a lie. Maybe it's a concept that seems real to the parent, like there's governments and they think these things are real. Organisations, companies, there's all sorts of stuff in the world that isn't real. You must eat that. You must eat all your food on your plate. But why? Now, if the lady knew the answer, she would tell him. And she says, she doesn't know the answer, she says, because I say so. And if the, the child carries on, why, 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 then she uses witchcraft and she says, because why is a crooked letter and you cannot make it straight? And that's the end of it. Now the child is, now the child just has to shut up and the karma of that is on the parent. Everything that happens to the child until they're the age of 16 is the responsibility of the parent. And so people even don't even know they do this and things happen to them and they don't put two and two together. They sort of said, well, because I didn't tell the child why properly, now I've got this terrible thing in my life. <laughs> you have to understand the whole basis of science. Everything is perfect and happening automatically and there's complete justice in the world. And whatever happens to anybody, that's God's word on their life, their mistakes, everything. And if you start to learn that and follow that, you'll stop having bad experiences. And all I'm doing, I'm not saying to you, believe me. I'm saying it's a theory that works and if you try it you might then find out about it. If you don't try it you'll never know and you, most of you didn't try what Jesus said. Jesus said the little babies, they said follow the will of God. Don't do your own will. Don't do what you hate. Simple teachings. Desire leads to suffering. No, you still want uh, you still want that fancy car, you know, you still don't want to go and do certain things, but you still got to do them, you know. You go and uh, get your warrant of fitness every now and again, and you, and, you, and, and you don't, you hate doing it, you hate taking your car there, but you still keep on doing it. And you haven't said, well, I'll just drive my car, what the hell with it? Or, I'm not going to have a car at all, they just stink up the place and ruin the environment. You haven't actually addressed the things that you're doing that you hate. You see, keep going into that job every day that you just hate. And you don't walk away from it. You don't say, well, I hate going here, so I won't go here. I'll find out what happens next. Now, if you do that, if you never do what you hate, you'll never end up like Chapman or Lennon. They both the same. They both made mistakes. They can't learn their lesson. Now, when I did this video, and I did the whole thing, and I only ended up with three videos. This camera can only take three videos. You know, there's only three numbers in the universe. One, two, three. 
and then this camera stops it won't make a fourth one <laughs> and so when I saw that I thought maybe I need to tell you about that once twice three times and that's enough again because you don't make mistakes just once and then this happens to you you have to make mistakes many times and you have to make you know you, you told you once I told you twice three times and that's enough that's it at the small level and then you get shown it in another way a more stronger way and then a more strong way and if you do it three times three you will then end up on the out way three times three is nine and then you've got 10 11 12 you can't do that it has to go to 13 and then you've got to go one two and then four off at the end of it and that's what happened in um, this speaker mccarthy i see this morning I woke up early this morning and the wire came into the, the computer, I turned the computer on and I had a thought, oh I'll look and see what's happened with McCarthy and I noticed McCarthy was done 14 of these, it failed 14 times and the 15th one was still going and so I was reading the stuff, what the history of it was and then when I scrolled back up the page I noticed while well, I've been reading the page they'd actually completed the 15th one and he was in so, and there was a big fight right at the end. There was a big fight, almost came to fisticuffs in the Senate. It was bullying, there was bullying going on. And so McCarthy bullied him his way in. And so that means that the war carries on. There's no change now. Now it's just like, you no, know, he's wearing the Ukraine flag and now the nations of the world fight each other and they have to do it because they're both wrong the russians are wrong the chinese are wrong the americans the british are wrong they're all wrong and it's necessary that this lot destroys the wrongness in them comes to see what's right and we move forward into a new age a thousand years of light that's what i'm predicting a thousand years of light a new age is going to come out of this terrible World War III and it's not going to affect any of the elect, the children of light, the elect are going to just be brought through it. As long as they don't get involved in it, they're just going to be brought through it and they're not going to be taken out. Like entire nations are going to be assassinated now and other nations are going to assassinate them just like Lenin and Chapman. They're both wrong. And some good judge has to emerge out of this and recognize such. And the whole world needs to learn deeper lessons, especially that you cannot have anything atomic ever again. That's the end of it. You cannot make any more atom science. That's not going any further. It's over. It ain't going any further. I'll put a link to the future just to remind you of what Leonard Cohen who's also a prophet, had to say about the future. Thanks for watching. If you can just get your mind together, come on across to me. Watch the sunrise from the bottom.